I'll wait another minute for folks to wander in here. All right, I'll well, go ahead and get started here. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Uh, viewers coming up, still trying to get emojis out. Um, we also have a bunch of the usual mates in development. Uh, then uh, quite a bit of work going on for GLTF, high priority bug fixing. Um, some of the existing bug fixes are going to go out as part of the GLTF Mate 2, which is an RC, and some are going to wind up with the uh, the featurettes branch, which has mirrors and terrain and uh, potentially 2K textures if everything works out with those. Um, so we'll see. Uh, try to get the bug fixes out in the most expedient way so if things are wind up going slower than we expect with featurettes we can uh, we can move those to a different release uh, let's see graphics work as I mentioned we've got mirrors we've got uh, terrain we're we're very interested in 2k texture support but we want to do more uh, investigation into you know, performance and memory impact to make sure that it's not gonna cause too much uh, pain and suffering there. Uh, other things, uh, so we've announced, I think we talked about this some in previous meetings, the possibility of doing client-side scripting, uh, but we've announced that we are actually going to try to tackle that, so uh, there will be more news as that gets closer to release, but we're investigating various possible applications of client-side scripting. Uh, if you look at what's in the current code base, it's uh, kind of a proof-of-concept demo, but it's not necessarily representative of any of the kind of final state of the APIs we're going to wind up with. 8192 textures, that sounds good. 100k Linden upload fee, though. Floating point, though. Yeah. That would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's all I got. What's going on with you guys? I... Oh, Lord. So, from what we saw in the announcement about the client-side scripting, it was mentioned that the idea would be to use Lua for that. My biggest concern about that is that from my experience with dealing with other programs that use Lua, Lua is a pro is a language that seems to struggle to sandbox effectively. Uh, yeah, I guess we should have qualified the announcement a little bit there. We're, we're actually planning to use Luau, which is a sort of a VMified version of Lua. Um, that was originally developed by the Roblox folks. Um, so I think in terms of, you know, keeping 
keeping it sandboxed from from the the you know rest of the operating system it should be pretty solid um you know obviously that's not the only security concern with client side scripts the the much trickier thing is making sure that uh uh you know you're not going to have vectors where where you're uh you're in in uh your in world content is is at risk um but uh i'm i'm hopeful that that's going to be a you know solid enough approach for uh you know for just kind of general sandboxing purposes uh, do you have any experience with that one um directly coding for it no however one of the things that i experienced being as being around in the like Gary's Mod craze because Gary's Mod is is basically entirely Lua ran. Um, it was very common for a lot of add-ons for Gary's Mod to just be remote code ex, uh, execution vectors. Or should add-on uh, creators have beef with each other? What they tend to do is check if you are running another add-on and just either mess up your game or disable their add-on or disable the other person's add-on. It was really bad that in the Gmod era, there were entire add-ons designed to just, quote, be antiviruses to avoid, to try and do their best to avoid a lot of malicious add-ons. Yeah, I mean, I think that was, uh, I, I think addressing at least some of those types of issues was one of the motivations for the Luau project. Um, it's It's got a bunch of stuff removed that Lua supports, like you don't have general file system access. Um, you know, it's, it's all kind of living in a VM. So, um, uh, you know, hopefully hopefully at least at the sort of you know operating system security level that's going to be pretty solid now if if you're talking about uh you know scripts kind of doing th aggressive things to each other in game um yeah i think it's it's there's that's where uh that's where there's the you know more potential subtleties that we're going to have to talk through yeah cuz like the drama and and the, some creators have it's like life. It's pretty intense and something that's going to have to be addressed if you go forward with uh, client side scripting, especially with Luau. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we know certainly that's something we're going to be looking at the the uh, you know potential uh, potential back end impact is also something that we'll, we'll keep an eye on. Um, at at some point, uh, this would be later down the line. But at some point, we may want to try to integrate with uh, with backend stuff, so that uh, you know, kind of uh, client side scripts and and LSL can can play nicely together. Um, yeah, in terms of use cases, um, yeah, we're interested in things like HUDs. We're interested in. Uh, the capability of uh, extending the UI, kind of doing doing modding, uh, uh, you know, in in Lua at least to some extent. Um, interested in various kinds of automation, you know, being able to drive the agent around and do stuff. Um, you know, some some of the use cases are more for kind of in, more internally relevant to uh, do things like test automation, but I think there's likely to be uh, you know, some of those same functionalities are probably going to be relevant to other folks who, you know, either either want to do testing or want to do things like, uh, yeah, like NPCs. I, I wanted to, to pop in and, um, as far as as LSL hats, um, this this won't this this won't interact or, or won't. Uh, yeah, this is not for uh, uh, viewer side scripting on uh, uh, in LSL huts at this point. Just to just to clear, because there's some ambig there could be some ambiguity about huts. 
or what we mean when we say. T- yeah, I like TPV, but as a plug-in, um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, if you've got a capable enough API, you you could imagine, um, you know, being able to add new functionality to the to the viewer, um, you know, kind of as a as a plug-in, as basically a Lua mod, um, but we don't have. Uh, you know that's that's likely to come a bit later. We're really just kind of laying the groundwork right now. Uh, supportability have the ability to get a user to disable all client side scripts. Uh, yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Um, we we need to make it very clear when there's scripts running and make sure that people have the tools to turn them off. Uh, yeah, that's my really, biggest concern, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we haven't really talked about mobile viewer yet. I um, think that's uh, that's kind of in the TBD column right now. The the current work is all on the is all on the desktop client though. Customized appearance of windows, add better displays. Yeah, I mean, I th- I think those are going to be some of the earlier applications. Um, you know, client-side scripting as a component of user-generated content is, uh, you know, if, if we pursue that, that's going to be farther down the road because, um, you know, firstly, there's more security concerns, and secondly, uh, you know, it would need to be consistent, right? You would need to have a common API that, uh, you know, was supported by, uh, you know, most of the TPVs as well. So, be, uh, you know, talking with you folks closely before anything like that was was on the kind of near-term horizon. I think making um, you know making the kind of mod slash plugins cross viewer would be trickier because you know everybody's got their own their own set of UI widgets and their own uh, you know specific operations they support so it wouldn't be as easy to uh, have kind of a shared framework for that um, but if you know, if that's something it looks like it's in a getting to be in a state that that uh, APVs are interested in it, then uh, you know we could talk about trying to come up with some kind of shared standards there as well. Um, you know, just in the the kind of prototype work we've done so far, it's you know it's it's fairly easy to hook things in at the level of um, you know currently a UI element gets created. As you're processing a ZUI file, and then you change to, uh, you know, to support uh, commands to do that, uh, you know, inside a script. Um, but, you know, the UI elements are going to be different for, for, uh, you know, other viewers. Um, so that's that's a that's a trickier one to to slice, I think.
Yeah, you know, obviously there's a there's a wide range of different language alternatives. Um, you know, a couple of things that have made the uh, the kind of Lua slash Luau appealing is, you know, the fact that it's a you know small, lightweight, not not very much code. You can just link it right into the viewer. Um, doesn't require you to have other software installed on your system to work. Um, and the uh, you know the existing framework for for sandboxing um, from from the standpoint of you know language superiority yeah you know Lua is widely used as an extension language for uh, you know for games and uh, and other applications um, you know I, I think in large part for those other reasons uh, not not necessarily because people are maximally excited about it, you know, as a language. Obviously, uh, you know, something like Python has a has a lot of power, but uh, is is much trickier to kind of create in a consistent way on everybody's varied platforms. I personally was pushing for APL, but everyone just looked at me funny. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the internal debates about APL versus fourth got pretty messy. We always look at you funny. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> Let's see. What else do we have here? Any other updates? Uh, uh, Cosmic, do you want to say anything else about what's going on in Graphics Land? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I can have a few more remarks there. Um, so, as you, some of you may know, uh, there's a, a new testing region, Rumpus Room 2048, uh, uh, and a uh, viewer um, in development called the Materials Featurette v Viewer. Uh, the purpose of this region, which is on IDE, is to enable feature flags for testing of uh, the new featurette features, which includes mirrors, 2448 textures, um, PR terrain. Um, uh, there are folks currently on, on the region uh, testing stuff out, uh, especially uh, the uh, mirrors and uh, 2K textures. Uh, Gaines has been working a way to uh, uh, optimize and knock the bugs out of uh, the mirrors implementation. Um, uh, and uh, I've been uh, working on uh, polishing uh, PBR terrain and uh, uh, PBR materials swatches. Um, um, and yeah, that's about uh, it, the um, materials uh, feature at viewer um, is technically public. You can uh, download it from the GitHub releases, um, but uh, the feature flags are disabled by uh, default. So uh, uh, definitely check out the uh, ADD region it, uh, if you if you want to test this stuff. I, th I think that's um, all for me uh, in the graphics team. Cosmic, do you think it's possible to do a blog post that kind of says what's coming soon um, and putting it out there, especially about mirrors, because people are still under the impression that we have mirrors now and doing releases, calling them mirrors when they're not mirrors. And I think that there's still really a disconnect there and maybe a blog post could help shine a little bit of light on that. Uh, that's great feedback, Sassy, um, and that's something I'll take care of. Thanks, Kyle. Let's 
Let's see. Anything else? Uh, Ryder, any news on the server side of the house? Uh, let's see. Gingerbread should be going out to the rest of the RCs next week. Um, that's got the uh, synchronous note card reading, <laughs> um, aspect ratio. Um, let's see. Um, for the uh, uh, oh, avatar appearance messages coming in from the network. There is now going to be a byte which tells you either how many um, how many uh, uh, prims are in a link set um, or how many attachments, uh, depending on whether it's pointing to a, whether it's describing a root prim or an avatar. Um, so that should be, uh, uh, so yeah, there, there will be an extra bite. Uh, where's the... Does that include the work to send the actual like asset IDs of the attachments to? Uh, no, no. Uh, we're we only telling you how many to expect. Okay. Um, scripting, uh, scripting wise, LL sensor is being bumped up from sixteen to thirty-two. Um, so you can uh, you you can now find twice as many things. Um, oh, and, and uh, Leviathan's uh, world position to HUD uh, should uh, should be in there, which will allow a uh, which will give you a, uh, a, a point. Uh, it'll 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 let you position a HUD uh, uh, based on uh, the position of an object in the world. So those are all pretty exciting. There's so many actually exciting things actually coming up. Sorry for the two actuallys. But um, I think a lesson learned from the PBR release with the inventory changes is that maybe when you do do mirrors and mirrors do go live, please only do mirrors because whatever else you release at the same time is just going to get psh, ignored. <laughs> and. And I think that that's unfair to whatever the other thing is. So, like, maybe one thing at a time, even if it's there, maybe don't mention it at the same time or something. Sorry to try and say do this or do that. But do you understand what I mean? Like, PBR just got ignored by so many people because of the inventory stuff that was awesome. You, you want us to go slower? No. <laughs> nice try, though. But I just mean, like, if you release mirrors and then at the same time you go, here's mirrors and this other thing, uh, people won't hear anything about the other thing in their brain until they've exhausted their fun with mirrors. Like, it will just be, it will just be a, 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 a thing. Uh, I think people are going to notice terrain. I mean, if you're, if everything around you looks radically different, then probably going to get your attention. Terrain's pretty awesome. I'm so excited. Oh no, my terrain has changed. Fix it back. Yeah, well, of course we're not going to change all, all the like terrain pepper. out from under everybody, but they'll have the option to change things. Uh, so Beck had a question about VRAM. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're certainly going to look at that sort of thing in the context of, uh, of validating the two take the 2K textures work. Um, we want to make sure we understand the impact on, you know, viewer and and other parts of the system, uh, you know, as, as we uh, try to push that forward. It did come up in the past to um, the emoji viewer. Uh, is there going to be a toggle on off option for that? Like if we, if somebody's using it, but they don't actually want to see um, the emojis as emojis, is that going to be possible? 
Uh, we don't uh, currently have anything like that in the viewer. Um, and of course, it's been possible to have Unicode characters in in chat for a long time. That you know, there's also not a way to toggle off. Um, you know, if if we got a lot of uh, requests about that, we might uh, might discuss it. But it's I know it's not part of the initial release that we're planning. So the emoji viewer, this is I guess this is the separateness that I don't understand. The emoji viewer will be part of the regular viewer. Like it'll just mean that the regular viewer will have emoji options, correct? My concern is that it's it's going to make a change to people's visual intake and if people spam with emojis proper emojis like they do often with unicode then it could get quite intense for some people that that may have a an aversion to that kind of um you know i mean more the i, I mean more the color and stuff like that could just be really quite sh um shocking for people that are uh, not able to take all that in at one time. Sounds like a fantastic feature for a third party viewer. I just don't know the right wording to say, you know, some people are really sensitive to graphic spam or, or just, you know, and and trying to, to, to make sure that nobody's scared to log in or no not not like that I mean like you know how now some uh, shopping centers and stuff are dimming lights a little bit for people to shop at certain hours because they might have um, sort of issues with just the intensity of something happening at once and I just think that that we're very likely to have people like that in Second Life because Second Life is a very safe space and I just think that suddenly this because even I know with not having any problems like that or or issues with that the Unicode thing when somebody spams you know it's, and it's lovely when suddenly your whole group chat though is a Christmas tree with whatever in it and it's just Unicode it's still an intense ah <laughs> but if it comes with colour it could be quite jarring to people so I was just thinking that maybe a let people have their fun but if people can turn it off that would be great I think from what I'm seeing in the chat I think there is already an off button wonderful thank you Display names. Can you put uh, Unicode in display names currently? Yeah, people do upside down things, curly things. <laughs> uh, people are very creative. 
think if you can do that, you can probably do emojis too. Uh, I'm not sure I've actually seen that in action. encountered that at the welcome hub where the display name is unreadable but but then don't want to be disrespectful by not using that if they don't want to use their username Yeah, this discussion about VRAM and querying how much of it you have is probably going to be a good question for Dave when he gets back. Um, I don't know. My experience with graphics cards is that they, they're pretty much guaranteed to lie, lie to you about everything, so uh, relying on anything they tell you is, is tricky at best. Oh! Um, upcoming feature, not in the next uh, simulator, but in, in the one following. Um, one thing that a lot of the state managers do is log on every morning at 2 a.m. to reboot their, uh, their or restart their regions. Um, they will now be able to schedule that automatically. That's huge. I do that for hair fair. I have to log in and restart all six regions and, and run around like a crazy person trying to avoid crowds of people asking them by message to please jump to the next region and so on. To be able to schedule that is awesome. It'll be a per region thing. You can set up a weekly schedule or you, you, you can, for instance, say, uh, Every day at 5 a.m., please, uh, please uh, restart this region. Um, and it, that will occur within about 10 minutes at the time you uh, 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 5 to 10 minutes plus or minus uh, of the time you scheduled. Um, you'll also be able to say on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, please uh, re. Uh, It'll be a one or the other thing, but uh, you could also schedule certain days that you wanted it. That's amazing. When's that going live? Sorry? Uh, that is in the Hearts and Flowers release. And that is going to QA on Tuesday. Fantastic. Oh, not a full, not a full, uh, a full cron uh, back. Well, then you heard something that I didn't back. Hi, Kyle. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Uh, there was a question uh, a couple of minutes back about adding the ability to mix and match uh, legacy normal maps with PBR. Um, generally, that's not the direction we're trying to go. We want to be able to say that you know we support the GLTF standard and the standard is the way to specify what things look like. Um, if if we try to have a kind of a mix and match and use whatever combination of old style and new style um, it becomes a you know a support nightmare for us and also it's it's going to be very tough for content creators to to know how to uh, control how things are going to look and to to predict that um, so it's it's that would that would not be something that we would be uh, uh, super likely to do unless there was some kind of a major issue. Unless you don't have the actual normal texture, you should just be able to set the normal as a override uh, through the material editor. And did I miss the content creators meeting that I need to suggest some things about, but I'll just get that on the next one. If uh, Beck, you'd raise a concern about chat getting relayed out of groups, um, I'm I'm not sure what we could potentially do about that. Are you are you proposing something, or is it more of a more of a policy thing? Policy would be great, like something maybe in the what what's that? In the notices, um, yeah. In the, it, when you open up the group info, it has like the the rules of the group, and you can input them. Maybe you could add some sort of a a thing that says this group is relayed. Yeah, I, I mean, is there any way to detect that automatically, or are you just saying that the groups should uh, should communicate that? if they have the option to. Hmm. It was part of the system too for Linden Lab, then you would also be able to get the data that how many groups use that feature, I guess, too. That might be helpful on your side. Yeah, if if it's just a bot doing the, you know, on the on the back end, if it's just a, you know, a, a bot is going to look to us just like any other, you know, I, any other resident. Um, so it would be, you know, and there are multiple reasons. There are multiple reasons besides just chat to have a uh, have a bot say in your in your store or in your in your store group chat uh, automated tech support say right that's um, what they're doing they're using discord bots as customer service people to oh. grab. yeah they're grabbing information from groups that's right isn't it Beck they're grabbing the information from group chat and putting it in discord so that discord people are privy to the information um, that's happening in world if they're not in world and I think vice versa so that help is 
is coming from both sides. So it is, as Beck said, it's it's kind of innocent, but for the people that are scooped up in it, they're not aware it's going to Discord. They're not aware that uh, somebody might be seeing they're online when they've told somebody they've gone to bed. <laughs> right, right. Um... Yeah, I, the, the privacy issue. Yeah, but I, the 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 issue would be detecting it from detecting it from our end, right? Because because this this echo bot looks to us just like any other uh, any other viewer. Um, and again, I was saying, you know, you you could have a you, you could have a, a viewer bot that talks to, say, ChatGPT and, and gives you all sorts of cool information about, about the product. Um, right. I, I think Becky's just saying that it should be clear this group is monitored and being relayed to Discord. Like, like that you make it a rule that the group has to disclose that and that the group has some sort of way of disclosing that. Yeah, that. I mean, the the insidious part of that is that the group might not know it's happening. That's that's what she means. Like I I I knew that people did it. I just never even thought about it. Well, <laughs> I, I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about it either. But. Uh, you know, the, the, I mean, the actual administrators of the group might not even know it's happening. Um, uh, oh, well, that's, I think that's what Beck was meaning too. The, the ones that are doing it for the most part currently, they're, they know because it's their group. They're running the bots for their own business practices. So it's their group, their discord, their control. So they, they are aware they're just not doing things that, that, communicate that as an opt-in or opt-out situation yes yes I, I I'm just saying that that um, putting a putting a spy bot into a group would be would be equally trivial um, and we don't have a we don't have a way of detecting it um, I mean, it sounds right, like I'm, what what uh, some folks are asking for is is more just the ability to, you know, th there's a mechanism by which a group that's intentionally doing this can communicate that they're doing so, and then there would be a policy saying that, you know, you if you know if it's happening, you need to you need to declare it. Um, so it's it, it seems like it would be. If, if if I'm reading this right, it sounds like it would be more in the kind of terms of service policy space rather than rather than kind of a technical thing. It'd be sorry. It'll be something like what Flickr does, for instance. If anybody changes the policy on the on the shout outs of the group, uh, if they change something to the rules and things, everybody in the group actually gets a notification saying the owner of this group has changed this policy. So if, for instance, when you join a group, maybe it would be really good if there was a something you agree to. You agree that by joining this group, you know that we are going to relay this group to chat, blah, 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 and you agree to those terms. If the person that owns the group changes those terms six years later because SL grows and changes, everybody in the group would have to re-agree to those terms or leave the group or, or whatever they want to do. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure why, but okay. But it was really just a, Beck was, I, I believe Beck was just saying she wants it to just be clear to us that it's monitored in some way as part of the, the group dynamic. OK, 
can we get a can we get a can for for this, and that way we can uh, discuss it in front of a much larger audience and figure out what we can do on our end. It, yeah, that would be a good way to go because this definitely gets outside the space of just you know kind of what's technically feasible and into into you know the realms of uh, product and legal. Yeah, I, I, I are an engineer, so I will frequently think, what's the engineering fix for this? And and this sounds like more than just a engineering fix. I think some candy bugs have been closed as fixed. I know that the mechanism is in place for that so that, uh, you know, when things do get closed out, it should get propagated. I don't have an example to hand, though. RLV plans. Uh, no, I mean, we're still interested in, in adding RLV support, and we've been in discussion with a couple of folks about a uh, possible contribution, but uh, don't have any uh, more details right now. It's more of a draft right now, but yeah, we are talking to Kitty. I would also want to review what's going on in the Lua uh, Lua land versus RLV. Um, if they're both touching the same parts of the code for kind of two different client side scripting ish things, uh, that would probably get kind of messy, and we'd want to try to uh, you know minimize that overlap. Any um, timeline on the ROV implementation into the SL viewer? Ah, uh, no, not at this point. Still in discussion. I'm sorry to hear about Lua's homicidal proclivities. That is worrying. When uh, ROV goes live on the SL viewer, can we have a Trapalinden event? I guess we really should. You don't need to wear a collar to be trapped. <laughs> See? See the miscommunication about ROV? We, we would frequently get uh, jeers.
or or not frequently, but not not infrequently that that read something along the lines of please please help my uh, I, I have a car and the person with the key no longer logs in and I can't get it off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I I know that stuff too well. It's kind of funny. It is. <laughs> I can't imagine how many tickets that you guys probably have gotten for that sort of thing. I once uh, visited a store and there was something off to the side, sort of like what reses your chairs, and I thought it was a post stand, so I sat on it because I wanted to edit something, and it was actually some sort of a a, a trap thing that was timed and every few seconds it would do a drop down and you had to copy in a coded set of numbers and letters that were put in open chat quickly enough or it added time <laughs> I just lost my mind it went on for like five minutes of every few seconds this happening and I was just it was in, it was just fun and hilarious but so stressful. Right. <laughs> but this, yeah, I have it on all the time because it just has uses that are just completely innocent, like my bottle holding right now is RLV enabled so it doesn't detach but <laughs> yeah yeah well the first the first letter means restrain so it's kind of <laughs> It would be kind of weird if it wasn't that restrictive. I used to hear about a lot of complaints of uh, people's inventory state getting hosed and, you know, the system folders got moved and they can't do anything. I'm not sure if that was actually done by RLV or other things in the same spirit, but uh, I haven't heard so much about that in recent years. You used to have to make RLV folders, like put specific items in the RLV folder for it to work. So I don't know of any times when things just got moved to those folders willy-nilly. Right, Christy. Other parties can attach, detach.
I did that to one of my besties too, Beck. Put a script on her that instead of me waiting for her to find matching earrings for an hour while I was at another location, I would just force TP pee her. That could probably be useful for some real life meetings too. I won't lie, I'm, I'm old enough that the fly still impacts my idea of teleporting in real life to not be a good thing. I just have to convince people it's as safe as automated driving, I guess. All right, well, I guess we're about at time. Uh, hope everybody has a good weekend, and thanks for coming by. Thanks, Fear. Thanks, Ryder. Cosmic. Back yeah. up, everybody. Mm -hmm. Dan over there.